At first, it was a brief statement. Uh, we lost a young man, Michael Brown, in uh, heartbreaking and tragic circumstances. Then the National Guard was sent in. Now, Attorney General Eric Holder is headed to Ferguson, Missouri. Still, the violence rages on. So what is the role of the president in crises such as these? Professor Stephen Taylor teaches government at American University. Sending in the top law enforcement official in the country um, shows that there's some seriousness on the part of the, um, the, the administration in resolving the issue. He says it serves as a checks and balances system to make sure local officials with ties to the community and to the authorities are shedding light on all the facts in the investigation. Comparisons are starting to be drawn between Ferguson and other events of the past. The killing of three civil rights workers in Mississippi 50 years ago and the brutal beating of Rodney King in Los Angeles in 1991. In those instances, the accused authorities were acquitted in state courts, and the federal government stepped in to investigate civil rights violations. Certainly that was the case in Los Angeles in 1991 after the police officers um, beat um, Rodney King, and they were acquitted, then some of them were convicted later on on civil rights violations in 1993. Taylor says he's not sure that will happen this time around. As for how far the federal government should go, Missouri Senator Roy Blunt said in a statement he agrees the federal government should have a role, but cautions it should not assume the state and local government's responsibilities. In Ferguson, where trust is running low, having a second and third pair of eyes seems to be the best strategy for now. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzell reporting.